This is a story all about how I tried to save Reforged but couldn't and how Reforged went to take a game from this with a 9.2 critical score on the Frozen Throne to this with a 0.6 user review for Warcraft Reforged. You see, I have been a Warcraft 3 professional gamer and content creator via streaming for a very long time now. In fact, more than half of my life have I been enjoying Warcraft 3. So imagine my surprise when Warcraft 3 was unveiled to me a month before it was unveiled to the world before BlizzCon 2018. Blizzard asked me to co-announce Warcraft Reforged together with them on the big stage. The fact that Warcraft was getting a remaster was not an entirely big surprise, seeing as how Starcraft already had their remaster announced before, but it was still an incredibly exciting development and announcement for me. And in fact, a great honor for me to be announced for as far as I know, the first time in Blizzard history to co-announce with the actual Blizzard Classic team who would be remastering this game. Warcraft Reforged initial unveiling was pretty good. They used a kind of machinima type of trailer that would end up looking quite good, but quite different from the eventual result. Once we actually got our hands on looking at the game itself closer to the release date, concerns and red flags started to pop up. The graphics weren't everything that they purported to be, not a beautiful remaster to modern standards that would connect World of Warcraft players and find a kind of likability and familiarity in Warcraft graphics. Nor was it a Starcraft 1 style remaster or Age of Empires 2 style remaster where the game would basically take the old graphics and just up res it just enhance it, just make it look better. No, there was a complete reimagining of how the game would look like. It was a grand undertaking that needed a large development team. This development team, unbeknownst to us in the world at large, was being downsized, underfunded, overstressed, allegedly, allegedly, by Blizzard management. And so they would never have a chance to release a finished and good product. And that is why we got something like this. But there's plenty of stories about both Blizzard's downfall and how it went so terribly wrong in Reforged. We've covered this before and so have many other people. What I would like to give tonight is a unique look into a behind the scenes attempt of this man to try and help the fledgling Blizzard Classic team to make the game look better, sound better and work better. For you see, on a more technical level, there were a lot of things wrong with Reforged when it came out. Reforged and Classic are backwards compatible. They're compatible with each other. And what this means is that if you go to the Battle.net Reforged client, you can play the game in Reforged graphics as you see it here. You can then go to your options and you can toggle back out of the Reforged graphics and go to the Classic graphics settings. This is why when I play Warcraft 3 on my Follow Grubby YouTube channel, bing, uh, it always looks like classic, like the good old game, and not with the new graphics. This is very confusing to people because they think I'm playing with a different client, but I'm not. I'm playing in the same client, the only client that is officially supported by Blizzard now. You see, they scuttled the old version, the old CD-ROM drive that we had, the CD-ROMs that we had for Frozen Throne and ROC. Whenever you launch the game with that CD-ROM, it will auto-update, presuming you don't have an illegal pirated copy, if you have a valid CD key. It will auto-update, it will go try to go online, and then it will recognize by Blizzard servers that you're playing the old version. It will then make you launch the game via Battle.net Launcher. It will basically destroy or transform your old installation, and it will go to Reforged which has a 30 gigabyte extra size package that includes the new graphics, whether you like them or not, whether you'll use them or not. All you then need to do is to switch this pick to classic, and then you can have the game look like how it usually does on my YouTube channel and on my stream. So this reforged graphics uh, release carries more than just uh, a new graphic look. The broken promises aside by Blizzard, allegedly, of, uh, you know, the trailers, uh, of the cinematic trailers that they didn't deliver, of the campaign that was broken, the ladder that was broken. I don't want to get too much into that, 
but on a technical level things changed as well for you see players that play with the classic graphic settings can play against people with the reforged graphic settings but that is actually kind of a technically difficult thing to achieve units do not have the exact same silhouette in reforged as they do in classic this acolyte is going to look slightly different in reforged than it does in classic the silhouette is a little different and the selection of an acolyte can be achieved by a via clicking left click somewhere inside the selection circle but it also works when you click on this shoulder pauldron as you can see here so you see it's not just the footprint that they have that can be equated between two graphic settings it's also their silhouette so there are a lot of things that have to work properly in reforged and in classics where they are in synchronization with each other to actually allow crossplay between the two different graphic toggle settings and this created some desynchronization bugs and it also means that everything has to work by by like storm bolts have to uh, fly out of someone's hand at the same time in both graphics no matter how the graphics looks like it was actually a really large endeavor a really large undertaking that required a lot of expertise and that expertise wasn't there anymore because they either got fired or quit the burning ship or were underfunded undermanned etc allegedly right and and this is from many accountings uh, this, this is supposed to be true for many accountings but of course i wasn't there myself personally so as an outside viewer and as a player of the game as someone that got beta access one day before i went to i believe blizzcon 2019 uh, I think that's when beta went live or maybe it was before 2020 I'm not exactly sure anymore but I got beta before I flew to a BlizzCon like half a day before and I ended up not sleeping before flying because I wanted to try it out and stream it of course uh, many things didn't look as good as you would hope but of course it is risky as a uh, creator to denounce the project to be a complete failure because you still hold out hope that they're going to improve things and I wanted to be there for Blizzard, my staunch ally in enjoying Warcraft 3 together in the last, you know, whatever, 17 years. I wanted to try and do what I can behind the scenes to give them feedback that they could action on and to help them improve different settings. And that's what this video, this Scrubby Talks, is going to be about. Because I found some emails of myself where I gave some feedback. I found files that I ended up sending them at the time so that you can get an idea of the state of things then and the state of things now so exhibit a this is a video that i ended up sending uh, to blizzard to show them that things that work pretty well in classic uh, didn't work so well anymore in reforged so what i'm doing here is i'm showing what it looks like when you place a rally point so this this is called a rally point flag when you take this crypt and you right click somewhere it places a flag which will be where all new units that get produced move towards. As you can see, this is kind of a static image that even if I repeatedly click right click, as you see me do, uh, as evidenced by the inwards arrows, it stays in exactly the same place. And that's clean and it's clear. Even though I give another command to go to that location, it stays as it is. Then when I take the necropolis and I also put the rally point here, and then I start toggling between the crypt and the necropolis to put the flag in the exact same pixel. You see that the flag never changes. Essentially, there are two commands for both buildings to give their units a path to walk exactly there to the same rally point location. But even though I keep toggling between two buildings, because the game recognizes that the location is in the same place for both buildings, it doesn't need to change the animation and it looks clean and it shows exactly where they're gonna go and it's the same point in space and it's the same point in time and that's why it looks like that so that's exhibit a then here in the next video i'm going to be putting a rally point flag on an acolyte what this means is that wherever the acolyte goes the necropolis units that get finished will follow and find the acolyte wherever he is on the map this is a function that works in warcraft 3 and doesn't work in some newer RTSs yet, like for instance Godsorn. It does work in StarCraft 2 as well. And the rally point flag is roughly on his head, and it will follow him wherever he goes. Uh, this is a reforged video where 
<laughs> my main base is pink and the rest is blue and this is the state of things when i was testing the game at the time i don't know why my main castle is pink and the rest is blue but uh let's try to ignore that part for now this isn't the case anymore in the current version of the game but just so you kind of get the point how do you imagine i feel as a pro gamer as a streamer as a fan of the game when i see stuff like this blizzard feels for all intents and purposes from the outside they seem to feel confident enough to put a beta out there and say what do you guys think it's like as if i let you eat my chocolate cookies but they're still raw and i ask what do you think about the cookies well you'll probably like it because cookie batter is awesome right but there's raw eggs in there that can't go well for long and neither can this pink castle with the blue rest so you gotta assume okay <laughs> eventually they'll fix it right i can suspend this belief and say oh, eventually they'll fix it they're gonna see this right right we don't have to say that or should we say it and you don't want to piss them off because it's like a professional relationship and and you think like oh my god they're so ignorant unaware or it's so unfinished i don't even know how to bring this up politely right because it's so obvious that's how i'm thinking anyway so anyway it's not this is not even about the pink castle this is about rally point flag as you can see when i repeatedly place the rally point flag first of all there is an aesthetic difference between this flag and the other flag. This is a preferential difference that you can have your own opinion on, right? Do you like this flag more or do you like the flag that there was for the undead uh, more? That is your own choice. That's not really the point of this uh, showcase. The point is that every time I plant it down, the flag disappears and kind of replants itself down. By the way, ignore the lag at the end of the video. That part cannot be blamed on Reforged. That is an effect of me tabbing out of the game in order to go to OBS, which drops the background FPS to lower. So as much as I'd love to say, oh my God, look how laggy, that's actually not on them. You're gonna see that as a theme when I tab out of videos, that should not be attributed to Reforged or to Blizzard. But uh, I personally see this and I know it's like a small thing and some people will call me petty or whatever, right? But the thing is, there was a level of polish to the original Warcraft 3 that I appreciate and that many people appreciate it. And you'll appreciate it whether you are aware of it or not. But once you become aware of it, you're like, oh my God, that is quaint, that is, that is pretty. I'm not saying this is literally unplayable. I'm just saying, this is different than classic. The flag now continually reappears instead of staying where it is. And then the question is, should it be different? Is this a conscious decision to make it different? Is it better or should it be like the old? And that's the thing, when you remaster old games and also when you remaster stories, the question always is, are you making a change because you made a mistake or are you making a change because you think it's better? I'd at least like to know their stance on it. That's why I point it out. And this is like really detailed QA stuff that I shouldn't need to be doing, but that internal Blizzard QA should be doing. And in the past, Blizzard did do this kind of QA, which is why Reforged, sorry. <coughs> this is why Warcraft 3 and Starcraft 1 are such refined products because they did do that kind of QA. Okay, so that is the point of the Reforged flag. Let's go to the next point. What you're gonna see here is rally point uh, flag. <laughs> I wonder how many people will end this video thinking I'm w weirdly detailed and think I have autism or something, but I don't think I do. And also I don't think it matters. And also how dare you to think that. And also I think autism is awesome, but uh, try to suspend your uh, judgment on me being particular because I'm really just trying to help them to f make the game as perfect as it can be. I'm sorry? Okay, no problem. I forgive you. All right. This is the... <laughs> I feel a little self-conscious. Okay. So this is the uh, demo of a rally point flag on a ghoul, which then ends up moving. Okay, you kind of see how like the flag is staying on top of him and it's very stable, yeah? It's just stably following. In case you missed it, I'll show you one more time, no problem. He moves. It's clean, you know. It's clean. It's good, yeah? Now I'm going to show you Reforged. 
Uh, there is a rally point flag here, if you couldn't tell. Because I know the colors kind of blend together. There's a lot of gray here. And it's very fuzzy wuzzy. And there's a lot of glow from buildings. And there's a lot of glow from the gold mine. And the acolytes mining. And there's glow from the necropolis. And it's kind of cool, you know. But this isn't World of Warcraft. We need to have vision. And this big old green pillar is basically blinding me worse than if you stared at the sun for an hour. Which, by the way, you shouldn't have done. It's going to hurt you. But uh, there's a rally point flag on the ghoul here, in case you didn't know. It's super obvious in classic, right? Not as much here. But notice how it wobbles. Realistic, maybe. The rally point is also like much more 3D, so that from some angles you can see the entire flag. It has directionality, so he turns around with it. At this angle, it is flat and almost invisible. See? flat and almost invisible and then from another angle you see the entire flag while that is pretty and i think the flag looks visually quite good it is much more busy and noisy compared to and i'm going to show you one more time the classic one this is a constant similar look that says exactly what you need to know you know exactly what it is it doesn't change it doesn't wobble it doesn't disappear it doesn't turn so you see uh one this is actually kind of a theme with Reforged. There are things that look good by themselves, but that when implemented into the game, lack a kind of uh, consistency and readability, which ends up being useful for a competitive game. And I say competitive game, I don't even mean for pros. You can always say it's a skill issue, just see better, just learn every facet of this 3D object. True, sure, it's true. But competitive doesn't just mean pros. It's visible for anyone. Uh, here I have a game that I took a replay screenshot of for both Classic and Reforged. This is the same picture. Almost. Almost. Almost the same picture. It's not quite, right? It's a slightly different moment in the game. How many footmen are on this picture? One, two, three, four. And one militia. How many priests? Two priests. How many breakers? Two breakers. How many sorcerers? Two sorcerers. How many water elementals? One. How many footmen are on the top picture? I haven't got an idea. I have no idea. Do you know? Zoom in on the footman and the reforged footman looks extremely cool. He has beautiful armor, pauldrons and swords, but we're not zooming in. It's all shrouded together. Also, which one is more clear? If you were to take a photo you took on your iPhone, or Android, whatever, and you click that little button, autocorrect. How does it look after you press autocorrect? Like this one. It's lighted. It recognized the picture is dark, and now it's lighted. This one is dark. So I show them pictures. I, I email them pictures like this, right? And I tell them, hey, uh, you know, I feel like visibility is better on the bottom one. Preference to which grunt looks cooler is one thing. Right, these ones look blocky and cartoonish. They have a lot of black outline around them. Uh, they are kind of caricatured. These grunts, when you actually look at them up close, look awesome. Very detailed. But how many grunts are there? One, two, three, four, five. I don't know what this is. Oh, it's a wolf with fire on him. I don't know what this is. To be honest, if I had to guess what this is, it's a doom guard. But I know there are no doom guards on this map. So I haven't got an idea what this actually is. I literally don't know what this is. And some people say, you know, it's about, uh, you just need to get used to it. You are comparing 17 years of exposure to something new. Is it not true that you have an incentive to stick to the old because that's what you're familiar with? And I say, as an influencer, love that term. Do you feel influenced, chat? If so, uh, you should probably hit that sub button right now on YouTube if I'm, a, if I'm an influencer and you agree with that. But anyway, as a streamer, as a cr creator, Right? I have a lot of vested interest in Reforged succeeding. And if I could passably use Reforged graphics, that would be better for my channels than sticking to the old. So I am extremely financially motivated, first of all, to use the new graphics. So long as it doesn't make me play worse or depresses me with how bad it looks. So I actually have a lot of incentive to change and still I didn't. Why is that? Some people say, oh, you're stuck to the old. No, I am incentivized to switch over to the new. I'm just showing you that I have a motive to switch over uh, if that's, uh, you know, if that's what mattered the most to me. 
uh, there is a big contrast and clarity difference, and it is not to do with wanting to stick to the old. There was an Orpa Fire effect that was added to Reforged. Orpa Fire was changed to apply a debuff that reduces enemy healing. And I posited that the effect, the animation effect of it, is too hard to see. Notice that when the Archmage attacks someone, you there's require going my assistance. That's loud. Is my aid. There is going to be a kind of greenish hue on them. You see this fart cloud? This brown this red thing is the fire splash damage lingering, which has almost no meaning. This green thing is the Orpa Fire healing debuff. Required. You right see away. it quite a lot. It's actually all part of the same thing. The green and the red is all part of Orp's Orpa Fire's debuff. It's quite big when you move it. But now what command. happens when someone doesn't move and he attacks the dwarf down here? As you can see, there's a small little green cloud here if we enhance X-Files or CSI Miami style. But if they're not moving, the debuff isn't very visible. This is a departure from most effects in Warcraft 3 Classic, where if there's an effect on someone, it's usually pretty obvious. This feels like they phoned in the effect a bit, and you until they move, you won't really get to see it that much. And that is something I brought up in the email, could be clearer. This is a uh, particularly interesting one because it directly ties in with clickability. I often marveled at how good Warcraft 3 is at distinguishing hitboxes for clicking. If there's a cloud of gargoyles, a gaggle of gargoyles, if you will, and you want to coil a specific one, even when they're very clumped up, but have slightly different contouring, I always surprise myself when I'm able to click the exact correct gargoyle almost all the time, even though they have a very small non-overlapping part with another gargoyle. That is because a lot of work was done that you only appreciate when you think about it, about creating proper hitboxes. Like I mentioned before in the video, a hitbox for a unit involves generally their selection circle, as well as their silhouette. Notice how I'm going to be clicking on this treasure chest, this item, to try and pick it up, but will fail unless I click in the right spot. What is it? Right now, you can see that my cursor is over the treasure chest. Nah. I am clearly touching the bottom with the fingertip of the chest, but it doesn't see it as a valid pickup. If it did, a tooltip would show up on the treasure chest. Only now, when I go higher, does the tooltip show up. Okay. But you can clearly see where the concentric, where the circles point towards. The green circles that go in, uh, the green uh, arrow marks that point, are pointing at the location that is underneath the treasure chest. Hardly wait. You see? And when the Archmage what moves there, now? he even goes practically I right on top wait. of it. But that did not constitute a click. And I never had this issue when I click on treasure chest in classic, because guess what? They did the QA so that it wasn't necessary. Fine. Whatever. Another thing is that they made the treasure chest have a floating animation. Do you see how it gently now. bobs up and down? I can hardly wait. When you hold your mouse at exactly the right time, it will hover in and out of your selection depending on whether it's flying or not, which is not ideal in my opinion. The treasure chest in Classic were standing still. Uh, in Reforged, many mistakes were made with the graphics with how big things are. You see, in Warcraft 3 Classic, Blizzard had the option to make things look better, but they downscaled the quality of many things, and they also made a normalization pass of how big things are, in order to make everything stand out in a multiplayer competitive game. Uh, and they also had to downscale the resolution in order to make it fit on CD-ROMs and not have it be too big. In Reforged, during the time Reforged came out, graphical capabilities are higher, storage space around the world on people's individual PCs is higher, so the sky is the limit with how beautiful they could make it, potentially. Even though Blizzard usually still leans towards a more common denominator that isn't too high of a system spec on average. Additionally, in Reforged, I guess they were really either trying to reach for the spectacular, making things look really big, such as the magnificent Thor or Mothership in StarCraft II, 
or in other games where you have giant monsters like in Elden Ring you've got like monsters that are so big right this is really cool and spectacular but doesn't really fit in an RTS at least not when you're going for competitive viability over spectacle in Reforged many models were made by the uh, many models were designed if not all by the outsourcing studio Lemon Sky from Malaysia it would then be sent over to Blizzard who would do a pass and would have final say about how something is going to look. This kind of outsourcing creates a delay because they're in different time zones. So everything is always going to take longer. There's also less oversight and steering on a day to day basis when you work from the same office or in a well connected work from home process. And that is going to make changes just more painful in general. Additionally, Lemon Sky and many people that now work for Blizzard Classic did not have the experience when it comes to designing the original Warcraft 3 Classic and are not privy to many of the decisions that were made that helped to make Warcraft 3 Classic such a success on so many different levels. Part of that is proper sizing. Creeps, heroes and items are sized to an, a proper size to help with visibility. I don't think it's perfect. Even in Warcraft 3 Classic, it can sometimes be hard to identify the Mountain King. But at the very least, every hero has been given a glow in Warcraft 3 Classic that helps identify them as such, as being a hero and not a regular unit, which is important. Additionally, heroes that are quite big, such as the Pit Lord, have deliberately been kept smaller than what lore would suggest them to be. If you watch the cinematic of Manoroth with Grom Hellscream, you see that pit, the Pit Lord is actually relatively big compared to Orcs. And while it could be cool and lore accurate to make him that big in comparison to Orcs, it wouldn't make for very good multiplayer gameplay to do so. After all, a unit model may obscure units that are standing behind him. And that's exactly what I'm showing here. This Archmage is on a horse. A horse and a human could not possibly be the same size as a footman, but it's actually quite helpful for visibility if they are. Not realistic, but useful. There is a footman standing behind this Archmage. Footman? This is a Militia 1, Militia 2, Footman 1, Footman 2, and then there is a Militia 3 here, and there's another Militia or Footman behind here. But I couldn't tell you if it's a Militia or a Footman because it's right behind the Archmage. In fact, if you hover over the unit, as I'm trying to do, you will see that I select Landazar because health bar is also part of the clickable part of the hero. I talked to you about the selection circle and the silhouette of the hero. Health bar is also considered a clickable part because from much testing, Blizzard probably found that that's a logical way to do things. That means that the unit behind it is almost entirely obscured and this was never a problem in Warcraft Classic. What I can not select the militia oh, no. standing behind the Archmage when I try to draw circles around the Archmage, even though they're in as different of a spot as if when the militia would be standing underneath the Archmage, where I would have no such problem at all. Again, this is a video that I sent to Blizzard and said, this is an issue compared to Classic. They must have been really happy with the amount of QA that I was doing for them for free. Is he reading a script? No, that's just how I organize my thoughts. I don't have any script in front of me. This is the one topic that I'm a big expert on, so I really don't need a script. <laughs> I'm not talking about world politics or anything like that. Okay, here we have a reforged creeping situation where my army of level five Archmage, some rifles and so on, is killing a level seven sea turtle. In Warcraft Classic, Units that die very quickly disintegrate their body. This is useful because underneath their body is a treasure item. There is either a Tome of Knowledge or Agility or Strength or, or, or um, Intelligence or a Manual of Health, whatever. Or there could be a permanent item such as a Belt of Giant Strength, Claws of Attack, etc. Many tomes are forgotten by people around the world. Many pros are known for forgetting to pick up tomes that give you bonus attribute points that are actually really useful. And this is something fans often point out because it's the one easy critique point that you can point at when you're looking at pros. Trying to, uh, trying to somehow disentangle the vagaries of strategical complexity where they went wrong is much harder for a fan to know than just saying, ha, you missed the tome. 
right? But there can be a reason you miss a tome is if the creep that dies does not immediately reveal its treasures. And in classic, the creep reveals itself very, very quickly. But you will see now that in Reforged, notice how long it takes for the creep to die and then to reveal its contents. The creep is now dead. What if I told you there's a treasure chest waiting underneath that turtle? You wouldn't know it because you don't see it. And it literally just died in the frame that I paused it. I'm going to unpause it now and you can see for how long the item does not reveal itself. Bingo! Oh, there's a tome too! Very nice! Well, even though I knew where to hold my mouse so that you could see Petty up to Fatality, and it is clickable, it is a if you know you know situation which as a pro it's a skill issue four seconds as a pro it's a skill issue just pick it up right just know it know the map because it's consistent you know where it's going to be because you're a pro but it's not very good as a game that is meant for the general public how long was it actually it dies at second four it became visible at second seven or eight it was like three or four seconds. Actually, this is very annoying and dumb. Yeah, that's what I thought. But because I'm talking to Blizzard, that's not how I phrased it. <laughs> this is very annoying and dumb is how I wanted to phrase it. But I'm trying to be corporately acceptable. <laughs> but I did say it. I did end up rephrasing it in a more respectable way. All right, let's go to the next exhibit. This is a close-up zoom-up of creeps lounging near each other. There are six creeps here. Of course, you're never gonna zoom out. Uh, you're never gonna zoom in this deep. I remember them saying, uh, Blizzard, I spoke with Blizzard in person and they said, one of their artists said, they thought it's really cool idea if during the nighttime cycle, when creeps are asleep, that they're not just standing with Z marks over their head, but they actually have a physical depiction of going to sleep by leaning against the wall and then sleeping. The only problem is there is no wall here. <laughs> so they might as well have been sleeping in a prone form uh, with their hands under their head because I don't know what the hell they're leaning on. This seems like some kind of perverse night long uh, abdominal crunch. Of course, they are ogres. They're very strong, but uh, it's a bit weird to see them lean on nothing at all. So while they're trying to achieve realism, they go for something cool that seems to make sense. Creeps visually sleeping. I think there's value in that train of thought, but they're leaning against nothing at all. This is how they look like uh, from a normal perspective. Then uh, farms. I found that the farm blueprint of trying to place a building it has such a clear visualization of, of, of how the farm is going to look like that there was no opacity and transparency balance between what it looks like and what it should be. What I mean to say is there should, the blueprint should look kind of transparent so that I can see whether I can build somewhere legally. I'm going to tell you that a farm has four valid hexes that it requires to be built. Top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. All of these farms take up two by two. That means that you need to build somewhere where you have two by two free. The game right now is telling me bottom right is invalid. Bottom left is valid, but I have no idea if top left or top right are valid. In classic, you could see this and in reforged, you could no longer see it because the farm, in fact, looks exactly the same as finished farms while holding a blueprint rather than some kind of transparency. Ogre warrior. So this is a creep camp that has a bunch of creeps. This creep is level four. This creep is level four. This troll warlord is level six. What level do you think these two creeps are? They are ogres based on their size. For you see, there was a size level sorting order in Warcraft classic. Some say three, some say four, some say five. Of course, anyone that knows Warcraft knows we're on Turtle Rock and knows this is a starting spawn location. They will know the creep levels based on their experience. They are in fact level three. This is the correct answer and I know that too based on my experience. But if I was a newer player, I would say that the highest level creeps are the ogres, maybe five or six. He's level four and those are level two or three based on size. 
Now, there is no universal truth as mandated by God that creeps level must be symmetrical to their size. However, this is the way that Blizzard, as far as I feel and remember for Warcraft Classic and as far as I play the game pretty much on a daily basis for the last 20 years almost, uh, there is a grouping to size. Bigger creeps are higher level. Ogre Lord is the biggest, he's level 7, right? Level 5, Ogre Mauler is smaller. Ogre Th Warrior, this one, level 3, is smaller still. But they kind of just randomize things. Lemon Sky provides a model to uh, to Blizzard. Blizzard accepts the model or sends it back for feedback. Eventually, they get something that they're satisfied with. They implement it in the game. They do some kind of sizing, but they forgot the original philosophy that there was a matching of size and level. And so this this picture was for me to point out to them that I've lost that balance. I don't see that anymore. It's a lot of little things that don't break the reception of a game, but that showed to me that there was a kind of unfinished approach. It's not something that I was confident enough to warn the community about before Reforged is coming out. Guys, Reforged is gonna fail because Ogre Warriors are too big and Troll Warlord is too small. It sounds ridiculous, right? But looking back, you see so many little things that are just not finished because we're talking about an allegedly overstressed team, underfunded, undercut, uh, rug pulled, etc. This is perhaps one of my weirder feedbacks. <laughs> I could I would take this one back if I could because I think this one is uh, it's not something that I still feel strongly about let's say <laughs> I said the straw or the thatch is too fluffy what do you guys think I, I went to look at pictures of how thatch looks like in the Netherlands and I said it looks like this but of course Warcraft land is not the Netherlands <laughs> so, so that's just like my opinion. So uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't like how farms looked like, and I feel like I should have chosen my battles about things that are more important than this one. But I showed you guys anyway. To be honest, that's really petty. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> All right, this one, uh, I said uh, the original Divine Shield was nearly fully opaque yellow. Uh, and the new one in not in classic i don't have a comparison here actually this is reforged divine shield uh, it's not bad looking but it is a departure from how the original looked like i guess that's a big theme a big recurring theme where i say this is how it looked like in classic you have deliberately decided to make it look different is that a recognizability issue or not more of an opinion i'm giving them my opinion i don't like this d shield as much as the original uh, because i don't think it's as clear and of course they can action that feedback or maybe they want right this one perhaps a bit of a stronger point all the portraits in reforged and this is true to this day have a kind of weird waxy look although sometimes a higher level model was used with more pixels and polygons or whatever it's called uh, they don't really look very alive the eyes always look a bit glazed over without a clear pupil there's a kind of waxiness a kind of not realism to the skin texture the lighting was a little off and it just makes it feel weird and cheap and i didn't identify that quality with blizzard quality and i was hoping they would feel the same but portraits still suck when reforged was revealed to us this is how arcane tower looked like first of all i want to point out how thick how just girthy this arcane tower is Towers went from being a relatively small, short building to just being unrealistic standard of long and thick. And they're just really in your face and it's hard not to like look at them. I found this arcane tower to be too big. And again, it is like something about the scaling that was off that was no longer like how it was in classic. And I think it's too much. You'll especially see it when there's many towers. But a bigger problem than that surfaced. The arcane tower shoots a kind of purple bolt that has 800 range and that does small piercing damage and also burns mana. This is how its projectile looked like in Reforged in 2020. The impact is relatively obvious with a little purple star, but the projectile itself could almost not be more subtle. 
It is ugly and bad and almost Research invisible. Complete. I mean, I wouldn't blame you guys if you didn't even know that there was a projectile. It's almost entirely transparent. And again, this is Blizzard allowing the public to Research play the game. Complete. And if I didn't know any better, and now I do, they felt that this was ready to be shown to people. And of course, from many insiders now, we have heard that allegedly, like, of course, they knew it's going to be a failure uh, and that it's not ready at all and that they're being forced to rush it out. This is how the necropolis looked like when upgrading. So you have the necropolis, the main building of Undead, and when it upgrades to Halls of the Dead, it goes into a transformation process that turns it entirely green. Except, is it green? I am playing as the color blue. That means there is a blue color coding to everything that I have. My ghouls are blue, my acolytes are blue, my gold mine, even my girlfriend is blue and everything is blue and inside and outside. Everything is blue. But what else is blue? A witch? If a witch floats, is it blue? No, not a witch. Stay focused. Focus, guys! What else is blue? Town portal scroll. Town portal scroll is blue. Does it not look like someone is town portaling to this necropolis? Let me show you how it looks like in Reforged now. Because it did get changed. This is how a necropolis that's upgrading looks like now. I am also blue, but there's only a faint blue here. They actioned my feedback. It's still a little blue, but it doesn't look like a town portal. I'll show you how a town portal looks like. I'll have to build a new necropolis because I have fast building mode on. It looks better now, yes. So this is an upgrading necropolis and this is how a town portal looks like. All right, it's not quite the same. It has kind of an overt look. And then I would have to show you what a town portal looks like in Classic to really tie things together. As you can see, this necropolis also has a blue through it. Mainly, this is Classic Warcraft, by the way. Uh, there are a bunch of vertical blue lines through it. Kind of subtle, but still visible. And it identifies the color. So that is pretty much a preserved look. And I will say it is different than what that picture looked like that I showed you just now. But it's also a little the same. You see how there's like kind of a bright white light at the top of the necropolis only when you're TPing towards it. And while the bottom rune circle is missing, it does feel a little bit like someone is town portaling towards it. Also, I just think this looks like ass. Like I think this looks bad. I feel like the original has way more character, it's more beautiful. Uh, it's not good, but you know, you're trying to come up with some actionable differences that show how there are some color problems. This is a picture of a guard tower in Reforged 2020. There is a lot of building fuzz, a lot of dust that I believe actually got used by Reforged artists to hide the fact that they didn't have as much detail or something for the tower as perhaps should be necessary. It was uh, actually visible in classic graphics to know what a uh, scout tower would turn into, guard tower, arcane or cannon, but not so visible in Reforged. I don't see what it's upgrading towards. This is a guard tower. Uh, I'm going to be showing you some icon art, but this is a healing pot. Um, does it heal 200? Or, or like, does it heal 250 or does it heal 500? It kind of looks like a semi, a se like it's kind of an in-between size. To me, it looks like a 250 health pot, but this is actually a greater healing potion that heals 500. It's a large pot, but it looks like it's in between the two. It is less fat than the classic healing potion. And so again, it's like a departure of the style because they've decided to be so ambitious to do like everything new and different you lose this kind of cohesion and visibility that Classic had built up via actual quality 2003 Blizzard work. And now you have to reinvent the wheel. And now you're wondering, what is that? Is it big? Is it small? And it's not as obvious. More on this later. This is an invisible footman. Do you see it? <laughs> there are visible footmen and invisible footmen. Uh, 
original Warcraft Classic did invisibility quite well. I cannot describe you exactly how, but it was pretty obvious whether something was, was visible or not. This guy has been cast invisibility on, and this guy has not. He's a little bit not visible enough. In a way. But I don't know, maybe this was better. Maybe I shouldn't have said anything, because the new classic graphics settings in 2024 actually almost barely have an invisibility effect to the point that I don't even know when, Bl when Blade Master is in Windwalk or not. Classic did it best and Reforged perverted even classic graphics because somehow they had to touch it to port it over to the new client as well. So even classic got bastardized a little bit. I wish it was more like this, but I pointed this out as being inconsistent with how good invisibility was in classic. Then I pointed this out. So you've got the Mountain King and he does a thunderclap. And Dota 2 has this problem a bit as well, which means Classic probably has this problem. I guess the theme here is that even Classic may have some problems and could have improvements, which if you think about it, Reforged was supposed to be an improvement of Classic. Otherwise, why bother? <laughs> why do it at all? All I tried to do is to make sure it didn't destroy as much as it would end up doing. And I was partially successful, even though it came at great personal sacrifice, because I spent dozens and dozens of hours of free consultancy and free QA work to try and save my favorite game of all time. Sometimes it would be more about trying to make the game better than it was, which is the case of Thunderclap and Lightning Shield appearing to have a very small effect, but actually having a much larger effect than is visually apparent. He just did a thunderclap with an animation that's about yay big. This peasant felt the reverberation of it and feels really, really hurt. But it is not obvious at all that he would be hit by something such as this. In my opinion, the effect could be bigger. There is some points against it. There are some points against it. After all, the bigger you make an effect, the more visually distracting or dominant it is going to be over other things. So I would say that this is a bit of a toss-up that needs advanced thinking and advanced testing. I at least wanted to point it out so that they're aware of it. Here you're going to see a bash. You're going to see a bash. The bash lasts exactly two seconds. It's going to create a stun animation on this peasant. That stun animation lasts longer than the actual effect. He's stunned. One, two. That's a three second animation on something that, as you can read here, only stuns for two seconds. I noticed that because it is incongruent with how I know the game works. So why is that? Why does the animation last for a second longer than what the actual effect does? In Warcraft 3, not every unit has the same model size, but Lightning Shield, as far as I know, is a consistent size from the Shaman. That means that its damage radius never changes. I could be wrong about this, but I'm not wrong about what I'm going to show you next. A Tauren Chieftain is big. A Bloodlust Tauren Chieftain is even bigger. And the Lightning Shield on a Bloodlust Tauren Chieftain looks absolutely huge. You would think that everyone on the screen gets electrocuted, but don't worry, it's quite safe. As you can see, the Shaman is completely unimpressed by the balls of Voltorbs flying through his head. After all, he's not in the effect radius of Lightning Shield. It's no problem at all. Oh, now he feels it. Now he doesn't. The balls are flying over his back, not even over his forehead, but over his back. And I said to them, I posited, this is not a clear effect. And this is actually the opposite effect of Thunderclap, where the animation is too big, but the radius... Uh, sorry, the animation is too small, but the radius is too big. Here, the radius is too big of the animation, but the effect is actually quite small. So we've got two opposite sides of the spectrum. And so this is not a case of visual clarity. This is a case of uh, visual incongruence. During some point of my initial testing of Warcraft Reforged, 
I got an email from someone at Blizzard and they said they were part of the Blizzard esports team. This was pretty good news for me because I didn't even know they had an esports team. Over the last 20 years, I've seen my contacts that I had at Blizzard drop out one by one and people that I used to have good contact with to give feedback about the games ended up leaving, being replaced by someone else or eventually no one at all. At some point, and that's true to this day, I don't know anyone that works at Blizzard anymore that is still doing community outreach. That means the only way to reach them with feedback is videos like these. Though much of this is about the history, if I wanted to give modern feedback, I would nonetheless not know who to send it to. Imagine my surprise when I got an email from someone and they said, Hi Grubby, I am with the esports team. This is my response. Hi, name. Nice to hear from you. I didn't realize Warcraft 3 had an esports team. Sorry for the late response. I think I can help best by connecting you with knowledgeable members of the community who've got mounts of feedback regarding Reforged already, also with a big emphasis on graphics. Graphical clarity is currently not very good. And this is like way back in, I don't know, early summer of 2020, uh, shortly after the game came out. Until the game came out, I always held out hope that the finished product in a month or two months would be better than what we had. Because for all you know, they're showing us like an early version and that's like six months old, which is also something that was told to us sometimes. So after Reforged was out, I spent the first week or two making big content, reaching the highest viewership I've ever had on my stream. Uh, I was of course playing the campaign and I was swallowing the malcontent I had with the controllability of it in favor of the hype of the game coming out and wanting to play through the campaign and trying to make it work. You see, I always try to lean towards harmony first. This is not just me trying to protect my career or something. I tend to lead to this kind of uh, harmony with people that I have personal conflict with as well uh, in personal life in most of the history of my life. I try to first make it work if I think I have to make it work without thinking about what I actually think about something. Though I'm getting better at being assertive and highlighting things that maybe not, are not working very well in interpersonal relationships or in business so that instead of it festering and then coming in late with a lot of uh, energy behind it, I can point out something early and it can get fixed. So I'm growing up and becoming more mature and, and you know more capable as well. But back then I was just trying to hope that everything is going to be okay. I got fooled by them as well. And this was probably a couple of weeks or months, I don't know exactly when, after reforce came out so i said graphical clarity is currently not very good would you be open to have a conversation with someone i pick for that role the easy things to mention right away are the new death and projectile sounds are not very good and are a detractor for competitive play if every unit now has five different death sounds of course i didn't say it exactly like that but that's what i meant some of which are low quality or bad or downright weird then i don't know what unit died audio visually based on its death sound so to give some context, if a unit dies off screen, I can still hear it die. That means outside of the visual impetus that I get from the game, I can hear, ah, and I know a dryad died. Or I can hear, oh, oh, and I know a grunt died. Every time I hear, oh, 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 I know, oh, two grunts died, right? And it's always the same sound. And this is how Warcraft Classic has always been. Every single unit has one death sound. And that gives you a visual confirmation that that unit has died. What if I told you a grunt would die in five different ways in Reforged? <laughs> then every time you hear a sound, you're like, okay, I think that was a grunt. Like, I don't know. But wait, it gets worse. For Warcraft Reforged, for reasons that are as of yet, to this day, unknown to me, Blizzard added multiple death sounds per unit, some of which were so downright orgasmic that I cannot even reproduce their likeness on YouTube for fear of being demonetized. Just in case you guys are listening to this in the living room and you've got family members and you care how they feel about you, I'm going to save you the sound of how some of the female night elf units sounded when they died. 
but I think you can make kind of an impression. You can kind of make an imagination of what they sounded like. Instead of the usual normal Archer death sound from Classic, the Archer would still have that death sound and also four or five new ones that were how I would describe low quality orgasmic death sounds. Low quality because they were not very realistic and also they seem to simulate ecstasy more than agony, if you know what I mean. Uh, and so that was kind of weird, but wait, it gets worse. Not only that, but some units' death sounds were on a charcuterie board of sounds. A Blizzard intern allegedly walked around with the charcuterie board of sounds, accidentally dropped one of them on the floor, forgot where it was, picked it up, put it back on the board in the wrong place. That's the only way that I can metaphorically describe what happened with Huntress and Dryad. Because the Huntress death sound went to Dryad, or vice versa. I don't remember which way it was, but it was 100% obvious to anyone with ears that a unit's death sound that, that has for 17 years belonged to that unit A was now on unit B. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Like, how does that even happen? How did they mess that up to upload the wrong death sound to the wrong unit? And so you've got the problem of different units variety uh, sounds that removes readability audio, uh, audio wise, right? And then there's like, they messed up different units. So I emailed them, I have a petition to reinstate singular death sound and all the original death sound for each unit. Point two, the FPS performance while using Reforged graphics is much lower. I'm now getting 40 to 110 FPS in Reforged with spikes as well. But in Classic, I have 220 to 300 FPS without spikes. I have a pretty good PC. Next, the new icons are not very good. Heal Solve looks very much like Greater Heal Pot and it's hard to tell what some items are. Pendant of Energy doesn't look very identifiable, despite me seeing it often. Same with Talisman of Evasion. I think it would have been much better to keep them all looking a lot like the original classic ones, just better quality and res. The Protection Scroll in-game buff effect does not look very good, and it's not very visible. It's a lot easier to see in classic. The sound for Protection Scroll has also changed, for the worse, in Reforged. The invulnerability potion is less obvious in Reforged. Reforged Cyclone looks overly comical in a bad way. Very basic. And for this, maybe my editor can find it if he hears this part, but for this one, uh, there's a famous witty video, another Warcraft content creator, where a Cyclone throws up a peasant into the sky and instead of him spinning like it did in Classic, he goes to check his watch while spinning in a Cyclone while standing completely still on top of an animation of a cyclone. That was hilarious. Uh, and then Shadowhunter now has a comically big uh, weapon that does not look very good. Let me know if you'll sit down with someone for more. The reason I was trying to delegate this to someone else was honestly just a question of time. I know there's a lot of community members that may feel like they are willing to put in the time uh, to point out a lot of these things that I see, that anyone with eyes sees. But I felt like if I have to point out everything that could take me hundreds and hundreds of hours and they're not paying me, to be honest, I would do a lot of work free for Warcraft, but I also don't know if they're gonna action my feedback. Like, first of all, I'm not a paid employee or contractor. And secondly, when you are, you know they're gonna at least take your feedback. Although I say that, and I think that's probably not true either. I have visions of working in Blizzard as someone with a great intent to do great things, working for the greatest game company in the world, and slowly seeing your youthful innocence and naivety crushed underneath the heel of corporate bureaucracy and click toxicity and uh, white collar uh, ignorance, etc., and publishing greed and. Yeah, I think probably it's not as rosy from the inside either. But anyway, I was trying to protect myself from that kind of treatment because I could avoid it. So I was trying to help uh, find and connect people in the community that often came to me and said, hey, can you talk to Blizzard? And I was trying to see if Blizzard was open to it. 
they would end up emailing me back and going in depth on some various points and they would say so what are you looking for and what kind of feedback can you give or do you want to give so i ended up going more in depth they kind of had some non corporate non answers like we'll look at this you know how it is we'll look at this point you brought up and see if there's anything we can do then i gave a follow-up uh, email as well i don't want to show their email for privacy and protection reasons but i can show you mine which is this one <clears throat> audio in my opinion is very simple give us an option to use none of the new audio sounds in either classic or reforged because the way it is right now if you switch to reforged you automatically go to all the reforged audio settings as well with the arches that die weird etc and if you're in classic, you also had all the reforged audio settings in the initial release of Reforged the game. Audio was by itself completely revamped for the worse. And graphics were a toggle. And this was horrendous to me because I'm extremely, let's say, audio sensitive. I, for me, good audio is very important in every game I play. And I have 17 years of nostalgia, but not just that, they are qualitatively good that I think I can say from an objective point of view. Because everyone thinks Warcraft 3 audio is good. But Reforced audio, not many people have an opinion on it. Maybe because not many people got to see it, because creators don't like to play with it, because they hate it. And etc, etc. And we know that Reforged got low grades, and much of it is not going to focus on something seemingly innocuous as audio. But trust me, it was bad. I consider this one of my greatest achievements in fighting hard to allow us to switch back to classic audio when you're on classic graphics. And they would end up implementing this, luckily. I pointed out a couple of problems. Huntress has death sounds that include a dryad dying sound, or vice versa. Even then, I couldn't be bothered to go test it out. I feel like I should have, but I was always trying to save time. And it wasn't really my job. They could figure it out themselves, is what I figured. Huntress actually got a new death sound, which somehow fell off the charcuterie board of sounds from Timmy, the four-year-old villager. You guys know that sound? <coughs> this death sound from Timmy, the villager, somehow got levied over to a Huntress. <coughs> this is like, that's Timmy, that's not a Huntress. Uh, I just couldn't abide by it, so I let them know. Uh, and Grunt got a death sound that was Death Knight's death sound. Like, how does this happen? Am I the only one that thinks this is insane? I feel like it's gaslighting. It's like that uh, college humor video where, you know, the, the guy's girlfriend's boobs are suddenly flat. And he's like, no, you had, you had boobs. You always did. She's like, no, I never did. And then everyone is gaslighting him and saying, no, she never did. You know that clip? Anyway. I'm like, what's going on here with these death sounds? Like, why did they suddenly end up here? Icons. 80 to 90% of the icons actually look like marked improvements from Classic. In the sense that the same design and scheme remains used and they were just up rest and 2020 ified. Good examples include Dust of Appearance. Do you guys agree with this, by the way? Or do you think I'm cutting them too much slack? Do you think that the new Dust of Appearance, as seen on the um, right, is better than the one on the left? Left is classic, right is reforged. Look at it without trying to find harmony between a dying company and myself and my contact with them and trying not to attack them too hard on things that aren't as big of a deal. Now that that is gone and I'm being more realistic, I think left is better than right. Better shadows on the left, exactly. Better shadows on the left. There's more contrasting, there's more outlining. Therefore, there's more of a clear silhouette when you look from afar at a, what is in the end going to be quite a, a small icon, actually. Then, next. This is Amulet of the Wild on the left in Classic. This is Amulet of the Wild on the right. Which one is better? In the end, they kept the theme of a purple claw with crackling lightning around it. I can at least accept it, but I once again think left original is better than right. In terms of having the hand have both dark area, the palm, and light area, the fur. Here everything is darker and there's less light, which actually makes it a little bit harder to see what it is, because everything is so dark. There is better readability on the left hand, 
And even the nails have more contrast with the hands as well. But I do find it somewhat interchangeable and I don't think it's a big deal. Maybe when it's small, right hand is fine as well. Anyway, it's not a big deal. Then this is a vampiric potion. Left, classic vampiric potion. Right, reforged vampiric potion. Again, if I'm being honest, I think left is better than right. I don't even think right is better resolution or better quality. I think the old, the left one is better than the new, the right one. But I was trying to name these as examples that some are fine. I said uh, the same design and scheme gets used. At least we can all agree on that, that roughly the same design and silhouette was used. So if they are going to be remastering the icons, the right one at least is not as terrible as some other icons that I'll be showing you soon. Here is a healing potion that I feel like is not very good of a transition. On the left side, there's the healing potion, the greater healing potion, the old in classic. It is simple. There's a very simple globe. It is about half full with dark green liquid. And you can see where the bottle gets corked. And it's just simple and it's real and it's really obvious to see. In your mind, you will have a silhouette, a kind of blueprint in your mind uh, of an outline that is a circle with a small dash, like a, like a Q letter. And there is a half full dark green liquid. The right side potion has a lot of ornamentation on it. There's a kind of gold embossment on the bottle that reduces visibility. The liquid has less of a clear lighting and surface level. It is more filling the bottle so that it's less easy to see that there is a part that is full and not full. And also there's a slightly less robust round character to the bottle on the right with the neck of the bottle taking up more relative space in the relatively small thumbnail of the item, which means that because the neck is taller, it makes automatically the circle look a little bit less big. The bowl is less big and therefore, in my opinion, it makes the healing potion look slightly less big and therefore less reminiscent of being a 500 health point healing potion. I would end. I would end up explaining to Blizzard that the colorization of the healing salve was actually a bit of a problem. So uh, when Blizzard changed how the healing salve looks like uh, in Reforged, they took however it looked like in Classic and they made it look like this. This top left picture is an upright bottle with a thick cork with a dark green liquid. This item is a voodoo launch item from the orc race that has three charges that can heal a unit so long as they don't get hit it can heal any of your units or heroes 400 health over 45 seconds this had a kind of yellow tan color in warcraft classic and because there was no clear pass at the art direction colors could change because the new artist in malaysia happened to find that color to be a nice color and the blizzard team didn't have enough expertise or history with the game to recognize that the color had changed or that that could be a problem. What you see on the top left is the healing solve as it was presented to me and many others in 2020. I pointed out to them that heal solve is yellow partially and healing potion, both the small and the big one, are dark green. By equating the two colors together, it reduces the visual distinction between these items to the point that it's actually hard to know if you've got a greater healing potion or if you have a um, heal solve in your hands. I gave feedback on a number of items, about 20 to 30 items, painstakingly pointing out all the items that I felt are the biggest offender of losing visual distinction from one another or from the original classic form and being so different just for the sake of being different in a way that wasn't conducive to good gameplay or beautiful aesthetics. So after I emailed that to them, I got an email back from someone else. The original person I talked to was probably fired or left. And I spoke to a new person on the art team. I resent part of my feedback, which hadn't been answered by person one. And now person two sent me this back. They said, we've actioned your feedback. Here's a pass at the icons. Let us know what you think. I'm going to tell you guys what I think about this. And I'm going to tell you what I think about the email itself. Because this one line in the email actually scared me. Do you know why? Let's get back to that in a second. First, let's talk about the items. The healing solve, they brought it back to a yellow color, which I think is good 
because now it looked remarkably different. I pointed out that the embossment on the greater healing potion obscured much of the thickness of the original greater healing pot and that the healing pot in general was less thick than it was before also because of the bottom placement thing they changed it and this is the new as far as i know accurate to this day greater healing potion icon in reforged in my opinion this one on the right is better than the left so i feel like that was a nice improvement uh, now it is obvious that this is a healing potion, it's thick and round, and this one is long and thin. The potion on the second line is the small heal potion. Again, I pointed out that the excessive ornamentation and the lighting, the red light here on the potion, was unnecessary and detracted from the very clean, vial-like potion size that classic potion looked like. And they changed it to this. Again, I think a marked improvement. It is more recognizable. And all three of these are now looking distinctly different from one another. Whereas these three all look fairly similar in some way. So I feel like they really uh, hit the mark with these three changes. And I found it to be at once encouraging that they were able to make such changes after my feedback. And I also found it incredibly demoralizing. I'll explain more later. This is a small mana potion. The mana potion, as you can see on the left, is tilted to the left. Just like the greater healing potion is tilted to the left, and the greater mana potion on this line is tilted to the left. However, I pointed out that in the original, and I believe this is true, the mana potion was not tilted... Sorry, to the right, to the right. I pointed out that the small mana potion was not tilted to the right in classic. The greater mana potion was, but the small mana potion was not. And so uh, they look more needlessly similar to each other. And if you think I'm being petty about that, how do you think anything of quality ever gets made? How did Warcraft Classic make things look distinguishable? Petty is just another word for a quality consideration that another person thinks is beneath them to spend time on because they are not passionate about it or they don't think it's important or they don't do that kind of quality control. So. Uh, that is why Classic is so good. Meticulous attention to detail, work things out until the final dots and I's and crossing the T's and everything. So like, yeah, I go back to it and I say like, hey, this could be better. It was better. And then they uprighted the small mana potion. And I said the greater mana potion doesn't look big enough compared to the small mana potion. Look, between these two, if I'm being honest with you, can I be level with you guys for a second? Can I spit straight facts? If you showed me these two, I think maybe this potion give more mana than this one. Because I see more blue slosh. The top almost looks bigger. If I had to judge the contents. So they took the greater mana potion and they zoom it in. So that there's more potion in you know, your field of view. It's so big it cannot even be contained in the border of the icon. And as brutal of a solution, as quick of a fix that is compared to the detail that they showed on the other icons in the top three, I feel like it still kind of works. And in that sense, it looks more big by comparison than the original. So it's still an improvement. And then for the bottom, if I ask you what that item is, I'm really curious if you guys can guess what that item is in the bottom. Because... I have in my chat World of Warcraft players, and I have in my chat Warcraft 3 players. Warcraft 3 players know all the Warcraft 3 icons in Classic, but may not know it in Reforged graphics. The goal for Warcraft Reforged was to come out with a graphics set that would appeal to WoW players in order to try and bait WoW players to replay the origin story of Warcraft 3. And so they wanted to make all the graphics look similar to how they look like in WoW. So any WoW player should be able to tell me what that is. What did you guys say? Talisman of Evasion, Katgar's Health and Mana, Katgar's Gem. And why do you guys know it's Katgar's Gem, if it is? Because I actually don't know. I think you might be right. Katgar's Gem of Health plus 300 Health. Do you know it because of... Because of um, is it because of World of Warcraft? Because it's purple? Okay. So uh, I can immediately recognize it in Classic. I can't in Reforge. It might be a familiarity issue. I don't think it looks great in general. I gave them some feedback. They changed it from left to right. Whatever that is, I barely see a difference. So uh, 
yeah, the top three, I think, are better examples of improvements. Uh, this, this is another set of items that got changed. Uh, hearts, uh, town portal scroll in Warcraft 3 was always yellow. And then for Reforge, they made it blue. I, I said it was yellow. <laughs> so they, they made it yellow again. Why would you change the color of Town Portal Scroll? You can make it look different, you can make it up res or whatever, but why change it to a different color? This is, I believe, Talisman of Evasion on the second line, right here. Uh, it looks very different. I pointed out that the original classic Talisman of Evasion had a, tri had a diamond form on the pendant, and this one was just some kind of circle. You don't know what it is anymore. Why go from a diamond form to a circle if you're looking to at least still connect with classic players? But maybe it looks like how it looks like in WoW. I don't know. The top picture is Pendant of Energy. Pendant of Energy had a kind of double color look in classic, but I don't know what the hell that is. In the top left, that looks like some kind of dagger on a string. Some kind of glintstone dagger on a string. L less like a pendant. I don't know exactly what. But um, yeah, they just kept making change for the sake of change or making them look like wow icons. I personally didn't like it and this was my feedback. So I told them what I think. And then uh, I cannot show you this part, but eventually I got an email that where they said, uh, hope you're doing well. Please see the attached for the rest of the items that we have in standard and in uh, HD. They used to call reforged HD. Of course, I refute that meaning. Happy to update any other icons you think would make it more readable for gameplay. And then they send me this file. So here you can see on the right side is standard definition and on the left side is high definition. So this is actually a side by side of old classic graphics on the right and new graphics for Reforged on the left. So my question to you, I guess, is which ones are better uh, and to myself. So if you actually look at Amulet of Spell Shield, the right side one has significantly less resolution and the shape was kept entirely the same in Reforged with more gleam, more resolution, more definition. I don't know that it reads easier when looking at it in game, to be honest, but I think it is worth a shot. I think this is roughly what you want from a remaster. This looks good. Right? This is a good looking icon compared to the right one. What about Flute of True Shot? They added some fluff, a feather and a little red ribbon, but you can still see it's a flute. I think this works as well. Of course, now we're starting to dig into, I have a nostalgia problem or I have a familiarity problem. I need to learn something new, but I'm trying to be objective here and saying at a glance, which one looks better. And in my opinion, all five on the left look better than on the right, except maybe the middle icon, the drums. I think there might be the color might be a bit clearer on the right than on the left, but at least four out of five, number one, two, four and five, I think left is better. Though it remains to be seen how it looks like in game. Here you've got circlet of nobility and claws of attack. I think this claws of attack looks a bit weird and cartoonish. And yet, I do think the classic right side Claws of Attack looks better. For Circlet of Nobility, I think right side, the old one, looks better. For, claws, uh, for the Cloak of Flames, I think right side looks more sinister and better. Right side, they give them the elven type of eyes, like I Illidan's eyes. For, for the Cloak of Shadows, I think left side looks acceptably improved. Perhaps better. Better on the left. But... And then you've got the crystal ball. I think they're very similar. This is a perfect case of a ball that looks very different, but has the exact same silhouetting and imagery that makes it immediately recognizable and stand out from everything else. Gauntlets of Strength on the left, I think look similar or better on the left. The new one is better, it's an improvement. Then you've got the Diamond of Summoning. I don't even know what that is. That is not an item in Competitive Warcraft 3. A Diamond of Summoning? But I will say that the left one looks better than the right one because there's a really cool skull of a skeleton. Then, Gloves of Haste, Helm of Valor. There were these weird things that Warcraft Classic did where they created an item like also Slippers of Agility. 
that just are, are, are strange. They seem like copyright infringement. These slippers looks to me... I may be crazy here. I may be too dip on the copium. This to me looks like Spider-Man slippers. <laughs> Slipper... <laughs> yeah, he's... Oh, you see it too? <laughs> yeah. And so if you go to Crown of Kings, that looks like a Captain America helmet. And that looks like a potential copyright infringement. So even though the new helmet looks nothing like the old, I think you have to change it in the new game. Just because of copyright. The Helm of Valor, not the Crown of Kings, yeah. Hood of Cunning. I think the older Hood of Cunning has better contrasting. The white and the brown look more different from each other. It makes it more recognizable. I will die on that hill for many items in, in Warcraft. But I think the left eye uh, icon does look higher quality. But I don't think it reads better in game. Kutgar's Pipe of Insight. I find it acceptable. An acceptable change. Perhaps better looking as well. I don't know what the hell this is on the right here. Legion Doomhorn. I think Legion Doomhorn is a perfect example of something that is notably different with many details, but that captures the essence and retains its autonomy as a unique icon that both the left and the right look completely like themselves, like a Doomhorn. I like this one. I like this new Doomhorn on the left. It retains the glance value, yes. Mantle of Intelligence retains the glance value and also retains the same silhouette. I like it. It's a pass for me. Medallion of Courage, I think, is okay. I like the right side more because right side tells me yellow, yellow coin is medallion. And left side is like more muted, more realistic, less lighted. And that makes it harder to see. I do think it looks better. It looks more cool. It looks more epic. But the right side one is easier to see in game. Orb of Darkness. Good improvement. It's nice. Ring. Nice. Ring of Regeneration. Bad. They covered the dead space of the inside of Ring of Protection. Uh, Ring of Regeneration. Too much. Too much of the black dead space inside was cut out by this tail of a bug or a dragon or whatever oh it's a horn it's a horn of the skull too much of the dead space was eaten up by that horn a lot much larger portion that creates a lack of visibility compared to what the original was uh rope of the magi it just looks more cartoonish in the new one somehow really weird more unrealistic in the new one if that was even possible uh ruined bracers new one looks awesome i think kick ass Scourge Bone Chimes. Um, looks pretty nice, the new one. I think potentially better. Uh, slippers of Agility looks better. Uh, little Red Riding Hood slippers, I don't know. But at least it's not Spider-Man slippers anymore. Sobe Mask is a nice improvement. Just more clarity. Staff of Silence, I think looks worse, the new one. It looks better quality, but worse visibility, in my opinion. There's too much going on. Uh, Staff of Teleportation. I think the old one on the right side looks better. Lionhorn of Stormwind. Perfect uh, perfect continuation of its look. Left side looks better. Warsong Battle Drums. Right side looks way better, in my opinion. And then uh, there's a lot more items. Probably too many to go to. Right? And when I saw this and how many pictures, how many assets there are in the game. Hmm. I guess Blizzard removed the female form in more games than just World of Warcraft. So anyway, when I saw that uh, there were this many pictures to go through, I saw that I had maybe a hundred hours of work to give feedback to all of this. And as much as Blizzard ghosted me uh, shortly after reports came out and stopped talking to me and people just left their business and kept quiet because of legal reasons and never spoke out against Blizzard and just started their career somewhere else so that they are not known as someone that will badmouth their former employee, uh, employer, right? And, I, and they could, were probably were legally not allowed to talk to me anymore or something. As much as that happened, I did end up ghosting the Blizzard design team on these pictures. 
I had booked certain good results with them, giving feedback, getting some icon improvements. But when they said to me, here's a pass at the icons, let us know what you think. And then they sent me the new list. I realized that they needed my feedback so much that they were able to, in a very short time, action on it. What that told me is that they were so short staffed and lack of knowledge about this expert topic that my feedback was so valuable that they were using it and they were using me. And the thing is, it's not like I don't have empathy for their situation. If I have to believe anything, and I do believe it, anything that Thor from Pirate Software said is that Blizzard employees are legendarily underpaid, legendarily overworked, legendarily understaffed to make legendary games with legendary amounts of passion. His words, almost verb verbatim. Uh, he said he made 37, 36% of market rate um, salary when he worked there and then he went to work at Amazon Game Studios uh, for a normal rate and where he got treated normally and not overworked and constantly on burnout, etc. So if I have to believe that, these people did not have it easy. A lot of good people work and worked at Blizzard and they are shackled by the corporate structure, allegedly, uh, and the corporate, you know, uh, whatever situation they have. So to, to them, I was probably a lifeline too, getting quality feedback from an expert. And then they actually sent it forward to Lemon Sky and they actioned it and then they approved it and it became better. That was encouraging, but I felt discouraged because I simply didn't have the time to become uh, a consultant to do, uh, you know, dozens or hundreds of hours of passes at items, which is just one part of the problem. It's not just all, even all the items. Then there's all the unit models, the building models, the animations, the sounds, the desynchronization, the menu, the menu performance, the ladder broken. There were so many things that I could tell them about. But luckily, I'm not the only community member. There are so many. And yet I was one of the lucky few that had direct contact with them whose feedback was taken some of the most seriously. As much as I wanted to do more to help improve the game, I started to think that it is impossible to get Reforged to the point where I or anyone would ever choose to play it over uh, classic graphics. And I started to redirect my efforts to save classic to save classic audio, to save classic bugs, because Reforce actually brought a couple of bugs to classic. For if Blizzard broke this and Warcraft would become unplayable or unpleasant or intolerable, then the only way that we could play it is on third party servers in perpetuity. And so I was trying I was starting to redirect my energy and efforts to classic and letting Reforce go. As much as I did that, I believe the developers did the same thing. Some classic improvements were made. By the time this video comes out, I think you will have already seen my video on Grubby Talks, which is um, how the balance is the best it has ever been in Reforged for Classic, right? Or, or for Reforged, it's the same thing. How balance for Warcraft 3 is the best it has ever been for the game balance in competitive play. So Classic did end up bringing many good things. There are many things Reforged ended up bringing to us that improved the experience for playing Warcraft 3 in 2024. They're not as fun to report on. They don't get as many views, but they're there and I appreciate the hell out of them, right? I appreciate that we can still play this game that I love, that I call my number one favorite game of all time. And so efforts into Classic were redirected. I ended up ghosting them. Sorry, if, if you guys are watching this and it was you, sorry, I didn't reply anymore. I, I should have at least said I don't have time anymore, but you know, didn't want to close any doors and I'm, I was irresponsible with the email and everything. And well, they didn't work there for long anymore either, I guess, because Blizzard pretty much released most or if not all of their classic team. But as people, sorry, I didn't reply and I couldn't help you with the other hundreds and thousands of icons and models and so on. And that is how I tried to save Reforged. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that sub button and I will know that I'm an effective influencer. I'll be able to sleep well tonight. Thank you for watching. Bye.